Perform QR decomposition for matrix A using the Gram-Schmidt process, where A equals Q times R. Both of these are matrices. In this case, since A is a 3x3 three three matrix, Q and R both must be 3x3 three three as well. In another video, I'll do QR with a 2x3 or a 3x2, but let's start off with a symmetrical 3x3 three three example. So Q is composed of three columns, Q1, Q2, and Q3. And R is also 3x3, three three, such that it would be R11, R12, R13. And it is an upper triangular matrix, such that if you go below the left diagonal, it's all zeros. So to find Q, we're going to have to find the projections. I'm not going to go too much into theory, just the application. So starting with Q1, it equals A1, which is going to be column 1 of matrix A, and I'll call column 2 A2 and A3 respectively. And this will be over magnitude of A1. So A1 is simply 2, 1, 0. And since I'm drawing this horizontally, you're going to have to transpose it such that it's represented in vertical form over the magnitude of this vector, which would be square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 0 squared. And this equals 2, 1, 0 transpose over 2 squared is 4 plus 1 squared is plus 1, so 5, square root of 5. Thus Q1 equals 2 over add 5, 1 over add 5, and 0 transpose. Fortunately, we already know what R11 is of the top left index of R. It's simply the magnitude A1, which we already found was rad 5. Furthermore, we know R21 equals R31 equals R32 equals 0, such that it is an upper triangular matrix, as previously mentioned. Now let's move on to Q2. This equals a variable I'm calling psi2 over magnitude of psi2, which is A2 minus R12 Q1 over R22. This is effectively A2 column minus the inner product of A2 and Q1 times Q1 over its magnitude. This is basically the projection of the vector. So before we can find psi, we need to find what R12 is. Of course, it's just the inner product of AQ and 2, 1. So we know A2 is 1, 1, negative 1, transpose, times the inner product of Q1, which we found up here to be 2 over rad 5, 1 over rad 5, and 0 transpose. So multiplying these together, plus 1 times 1 over add 5, plus negative 1 times 0. This equals 2 over add 5, plus 1 over add 5, plus 0. In other words, 3 over add 5. And remember that this is R12. Now we can find the numerator psi2, which is A2, 1, 1, negative 1, minus R12, which we found was 3 over add 5, times Q1, 2 over add 5 again, 1 over add 5, and 0. This is why I don't tend to rationalize all the fractions immediately, since usually they get handled once you do the multiplication. So, in other words, this will equal 1, 1, negative 1 transpose, minus 6 fifths, 3 fifths, 0 transpose. Thus, psi 2 equals 1 minus 6 fifths, which is negative one-fifth, one minus three-fifths is positive two-fifths, and negative one minus zero is still negative one. Transpose. This is psi two. And from this, the magnitude of psi two, the denominator of q two, 
equals square root of negative one fifth squared plus two fifths squared plus negative one squared. In other words, one twenty fifth plus four twenty fifths plus one, which is equivalently twenty five twenty fifths. So psi two magnitude equals square root of 30 over rad 25, which is 5. So from that, we know q2 equals psi 2, the vector, negative 1 fifth, 2 fifths, negative 1 transpose, will be divided by the magnitude rad 30 over 5. Which, if you take the fraction in the denominator and move it to the numerator, it inverts to become 5 over rad 30 times q2. which gives us this column to be negative 1 over rad 30, 2 over rad 30, and negative 5 over rad 30. Transpose. Let's move on to the final column of Q, which is Q3, which equals now A3 minus the two projections of R13 Q1 minus R23 q2 over r33, which is equivalently a3 minus inner product of a3 and q1 q1 minus a3 q2 q2 over its magnitude. And if this were to be a 4x4 four four column or anything larger than that, you keep repeating this pattern by subtracting further projections and their correlating inner products. Let's start with R13, which equaled inner product of A3 in Q1. And we know from A, the column of A3 is 1, 2, 1 transpose times Q1, all the way back up in the top right corner was 2 over rad 5, 1 over rad 5, 0. This would be negative 1 times 2 over rad 5 plus 2 times 1 over rad 5 plus 1 times 0, which is negative 2 over rad 5 plus 2 over rad 5, which equals 0. Now for R2, 3, that was a3 q2 now. So negative 1 to 1 transpose times what we found up here for q2 is negative 1 over at 30, 2 over at 30, negative 5 over at 30. Or negative 1 times negative 1 over at 30 plus 2 times 2 over at 30 plus 1 times negative 5 over at 30 which equals positive 1 over at 30 plus 4 over at 30 minus 5 over at 30 which is all 0 so 0 equals r2 3 so now we can find what psi 3 is which is just this numerator over this denominator so psi 3 equals a3 minus r13 q1 minus r23 q2. Now fortunately for us, r13 and r23 equals zero, so we don't even need to worry about these. So that just leaves us with a3, which is negative one, two, one transpose. And again, r33 is the magnitude of this, which is square root of negative one squared plus two squared, plus 1 squared. That becomes 1 plus 4 plus 1, or just rad 6. For our very last step, we can solve for q3, now that every single variable within r is solved. So our typical numerator over denominator of psi 3 over magnitude psi 3, negative 1, 
2, 1 transpose over square root of 6, which is simply negative 1 over add 6, 2 over add 6, and 1 over add 6. With both Q and R solved, we can now compile the matrices. So we freed up some space by just simplifying what we found for R1, 3, 2, 3, and 3, 3. So we can now compile our Q and R matrices. Starting with what we have over here for Q1, we have to remember to transpose it again to become its normal form of 2 over add 5, 1 over add 5, 0. For Q2, negative 1 over add 30, 2 over add 30, and negative 5 over add 30. Lastly, Q3, 1 over add 6, 2 over add 6, and 1 over add 6. For our R matrix, we know that under the left diagonal is all zeros, and we found R11 to be rad 5, R12 to be 3 over rad 5, and I forgot to label it up here, but the magnitude is R22, which is rad 30 over 5, R130, R230, and lastly R33 is rad 6. And that is matrix A successfully broken down into its Q and R elements. Now we're going to do two more things. First, we're going to reconstruct matrix A by multiplying Q and R together to prove our answer is correct. And secondly, we're going to prove that Q times Q transpose equals a 3x3 three three identity matrix. So I'm going to clear out some space and finish the rest of this up. So now that I've cleared up some space, we can multiply Q and R together to reconstruct A. Looking at the first row and multiplying by the first column, you get 2 over rad 5 times rad 5 plus negative 1 over rad 30 times 0, which is 0, plus negative 1 over rad 6 times 0, so just plus 0 plus 0. And now multiplying by the second column, Again, it's 2 over add 5 times 3 over add 5 plus negative 1 over add 30 times add 30 over 5 plus 0. And for the last column, 0 plus 0 plus negative 1 over add 6 times add 6. Looking at row 2 now, 1 over rad 5 times rad 5 plus 0 plus 0 again, 1 over rad 5 times 3 over rad 5 plus 2 over rad 30 times rad 30 over 5 plus 0, and for the last column, 0 plus 0 plus 2 over rad 6 times rad 6. For the final row, 0 plus 0 plus 0 again, 0 plus negative 5 over rad 30 times rad 30 over 5 plus 0 and 0 plus 0 plus 1 over rad 6 times rad 6. If we did this correctly, this should equal A. Simplifying. A11 is 2 over rad 5 times rad 5, which is just 2. And that matches up with A, which is good. Here is 6 fifths plus negative 1 fifth since the rad 30s cancel, so just minus 1 fifth. For the top right, negative 1 over rad 6 times rad 6 is negative 1. For A21, 1 over rad 5 times rad 5 is just 1. 1 over rad 5 times 3 over rad 5 is 3 fifths plus 2 fifths. And 2 over rad 6 times rad 6 is 2. Bottom left is 0. A32 is negative 5 over 5 is negative 1. And A33 is 1 over rad 6 times rad 6, which is 1. For the final simplification, 2, 6 fifths minus 1 fifths is 5 fifths, which is 1. Negative 1, 1, 
five fifths, one, two, zero, negative one, one, which equals a. For last proof, q times q transpose should equal i. Let's see if that's true. I just copy down q again, and for its transpose, all you do is swap out the rows with columns. q transpose becomes 2 over at 5, negative 1 over at 30, negative 1 over at 6, 1 over at 5, 2 over at 30, 2 over at 6. 0, negative 5 over at 30, 1 over at 6. Now let's multiply these two together. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing as qr, so I'm just going to try to speed things up a bit. 2 over at 5 times 2 over at 5 is 4 fifths. Plus 1 thirtieth minus 1 over at 6 times minus 1 over at 6 should just be plus 1 6. And by quick inspection, that's 1, so we're on the right track. For the next column, 2 fifths minus 2 thirtieths minus 2 6. Last column, 0 plus 5 thirtieths minus 1 6. Next row becomes 2 fifths minus 2 thirtieths minus 2 6, which is basically 1 third. And here is 1 fifth plus 4 thirtieths plus 4 6, which is 2 thirds. 0 minus 10 thirtieths, or 1 third plus 2 6, or plus 1 third. And for this row, 0, plus 5 thirtieths, or 1 6, minus 1 6. 0, minus 10 thirtieths, or 1 third, plus 2 6, or plus 1 third. And for our last index, 0, plus 25 thirtieths, plus 1 6. With some simplification, this equals 1, and this cancels out to be 0, and obviously 5 thirtieths is also 1 6, so that's 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Which is the identity matrix? This may not be the most fun thing to do in linear algebra, but at least you know how to do it now. If this video helped you, and you want to support the channel, Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.